and tell, sis and tell, a whole lot of talk, a whole lot of nothing. Amanda does stand up, Allison's on TV, and when they hop on the phone, you already know it's the place you wanna be. Sis and tell, sis and tell, the podcast is so sweet. Oh, sis and tell, sis and tell, a whole lot of talk about, a whole lot of nothing. Sis and tell. Hey, Allie. Hey, man. What's going on? I'm obsessed with Ted Lasso, and it's your fault. I mean, I will <laughs> own that. Ted Lasso is on it's Apple the TV. best thing to ever be produced on, on streaming television. Jason, is that what you call it? Jason. Streaming vision? Streaming yeah. whatever. It's called OTT. OTT. Over- that's what I mean. I guess that's an industry term, but yeah, it's like streaming a streaming network. Oh my god, the writing is great, and I keep on quoting it. And my my favorite new phrase he said was, he's he's ha- partaking in girl talk for the first time, and he goes, oh, so it's less girl talk and more girl talk. <laughs> Jason Sudeikis, it's so funny you say that because we just started watching season two, even though I, I wanted to not start watching it because it's coming out on a weekly basis. And anybody listening to this, if you have not watched Ted Lasso, I, I tend to exaggerate, but I'm not in this in this instance. You must subscribe to Apple TV this instant. Go watch it immediately. I already had a prescription. A prescription. Yeah, so a, a, a prescription. Yeah, you will need a prescription for this. It, it is like a prescription for happiness especially where we are right now like in this day and age you just need speaking of prescriptions you need a dose of happiness and positivity where the good person wins and this is it I'm telling you and the writing is so good and Alan and I discussed I said this is proof positive that the the name star is not going to get you a hit comedy drama thriller whatever that is these days it's really it's the storyline and the writing because we also watched not to throw it under the bus but we watched the morning show finally about a month ago and I didn't love it Who's and that? well and, and when I tell you it's Steve Carell yeah. Jennifer Aniston Reese Witherspoon now that I love all of them but I didn't I just didn't love the show and when didn't. you compare it to Ted Lasso it's it's right. a no-brainer didn't Reese Witherspoon play uh, her Jennifer Aniston sister on Friends? Yeah. Did she? Yes, she was no her sister on Friends. That. Okay, that's awesome. That's funny. Reese is amazing. They're all look, and the I love them. I just I thought the show was meh. Yeah, but I, Ted Lasso, I'm it's I'm obsessed good. with. Okay. Yeah. So also, I know nothing about european football aka soccer but it's still (laughs) like i watch it with the kids they love it and they're like please one more so it's really and we got mad at murray because he he started watching it without us and i was like no this is party this is a fam like we don't do like family game night we do family watching tv night which was like our childhood (laughs) 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 yeah people say what'd you do sir night i'm like uh duh love boat and fantasy island along with the stouffer's chicken pot pie what do you think i did um that's it that was every saturday night for like five years (laughs) so that's not actually how i wanted to start off our podcast but i just couldn't help myself well i'm glad because ted lasso just even mentioning him and the show makes me so happy i love his face it makes me (laughs) good i I love his face (laughs) so I, we did a podcast a couple of years ago, and I'm sure you'll remember it. It may have been – look, I, like time is weird in this world. It could have happened five weeks ago. It could have happened five years ago. I don't know. Right. But we did this podcast where I was talking about this hidden Beastie Boys track. Do you remember that? Sure. Maybe. So, w- so in 1995, I was listening to a, a Stewart's old cassette tape of uh, License to Ill, which is significant because – to bring up because it was the probably the first edition of the cassette that came out for that album. And I had it blasting loud and I could hear rapping on it saying, flip it over, flip it over. Yes, I do remember And this. right, okay. So, so, and then the And by the broke. way, is I may not recall the exact episode for two reasons. Number one, because, you know, they all sort of blend together and I have a terrible memory. And number two, 
folks, she talks about the Beastie Boys a lot. I do. I talk so about them. So it's, you know, number one, it's hard to differentiate <laughs> between just a normal conversation and a podcast episode. And honestly, I sort of tune it out after a while. So, I know, <laughs> but, but, for- but I do remember this. I do remember okay. there is there was this hidden track. This is all okay. coming back. And and I made a promo video. And in it, it, this is uh, my hair is so my hair's short now. I'm not wearing glasses, obviously. And in it, my hair is long, half up, half down. And I've got these giant white glasses on. And this is significant because I've been trying to I go onto forums for like a lifetime. I've been trying to track down this hidden track and everyone thinks I'm crazy. They think I was like on drugs. Um, I so I recently came across this new Beastie Boys fan page and everyone's very active. So I decided to post the video on there saying, has anyone, anyone heard this track? So all these people like the video. But this one gentleman decides to debate me on whether or not it's true, whether I'm lying based on the fact that he thinks root beer would not ruin a cassette tape. So then this, this whole... This is what he's... This is yeah. the, the hill he's planning to die on, really? And first, and first he said he doesn't realize it's me. And he's like, she's lying. And that interviewer looks so bored. <laughs> that was you. He oh, you posted the video. I'm lost yeah. here. You posted I the video posted of the, the podcast video. episode to yes. to refresh. I'm with you. And I look so bored. That's you just my normal bored. face. Because you, you work. Cause you could care. She's like, she could care less about the Beastie Boys. I'm like, yes, that is true. Allison could care less. But uh, we've established I, that. But it was that. But because the, the video like did such a good job of like recapping the whole situation right. and that I just it was so much easier to post it than like write that out. I'm with you. Who's the, so, who's but, the Beastie Boy named after the McDonald's? Mickey D. What's his name? Mickey. Mike D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's not named after McDonald's. What? I mean, that's how I remember him. Sorry. OK. okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm so... just trying to prove that I do listen sometimes. <laughs> Mickey D. Oh, Lord. It sounds familiar. I'll give you that. It's not can't be as bad as mom calling the Beastie Boys a boy band. But um, oh, no, I would never go there. So then this whole debate ensues about whether or not a cassette tape can be ruined by root beer. All these people start calling him out on just kind of being not nice. Yeah. And the post because he kind of went from like he was like mad. I don't know what it was. And then other people were like, you must have been on drugs. And I was like, no, you must have dreamt it. I was like, I didn't. And then I start doubting myself. I'm like, did I dream it? Did I? Was it a dream? And then this morning I woke up and there was another comment on it. And this guy goes, oh, yeah, I have this. It's on the promotional album. It's also on the Hold It Now, Hit It vinyl. And I was like, do you have the ability to actually – record it off of the album and share it and he goes yeah I sure do so I'm waiting now for him to do this Come but on. So he had heard it and he said my friend found it in 1986 and thought it was the best thing ever it's been around a while he had two different he has two different albums I think it's on vinyl right and they have it was probably the first edition of the cassette tape that had it so I feel so happy and also I so, love validated. so validated so validated yeah. yes and i love this bc boy fan page because all these people were like hey man you're being a little mean why would she lie about this <laughs> and then they're like trying to get him to do an experiment po- pouring root beer on a cassette tape to see what would happen it was like i like, cannot believe it digressed Internet. down that rabbit yes. hole right like oh, forget Lord. the root beer dude and sugar is toxic we just know that it it, right. it can <laughs> It can erode anything, including, you know, basically your arteries are probably yeah. inside your body. So An I believe engine, it can it can right? destroy a, a cassette tape. Great point. Yeah. They use Coca-Cola to clean out engines and cars. Exactly. Didn't you see that whole experiment where the rats preferred sugar over cocaine? So let me oh. tell you, root beer, <laughs> root beer, it's a gateway drug, man. So, so now I love how you asked him if he has the the capability of recording a vinyl onto digital. Can't he just hold up his phone and record? I mean, I mean, at the very Uh, least, you are correct, but I I would just assume the best that he might actually have. Well, then I'm wondering, does that, I guess it does. Is there, is there now a machine where you can, you can literally play a vinyl and it records straight to digital? Yeah. Yes, there is. That's amazing. There is. And there's so- stuff that can take VHS tapes and make it digital. Why wouldn't you be able to do vinyl? 
Well, I know that, but I, I'm saying, and I'm, let me back up. I'm saying like residential use, not commercial use. That yes. You're not going somewhere. You're not, I've done, I've transferred a lot of, if not all of my VHS tapes, well, to DVD. And now I got to transfer them from DVD okay. to digital because DVDs are obsolete. But I'm assuming this guy has this at his house or is he a professional? He, I think he has got, I don't know. I'm just guessing at this point. I don't know. There's only so much cyber stalking I can do. I don't know who he is. Why or what can't, he does you, can't you go on? Don't you think that, that that vinyl is already digitized somewhere on the internet? Now that you know which one it is, can't you just go find it? You're right. Yeah, right. I, yeah, I will. How is That's it not digitized? Hold it now, hit it. It's the promotional album because they put out weird promotional al- albums and they're yeah. rare. So they may, there's a chance that it may not be anywhere, but you're right. Now that I know. And a promotional album is different from a traditional album because. It may have been. And so for example, I've got this little tiny, I don't even say I'm not a vinyl person, so I don't know like all the inches, (laughs) but I have a magazine. The Beastie Boys put out a magazine called Grand Royal Magazine. And inside it, there was this like floppy vinyl record. That's like a promo. And it may have had like a single on it or spe- like a sp- like a special um, edition of a song, like a remix of a song. So let me so just that- remind you, there are really only and are only two types of vinyls. Well, traditional vinyls. A 45, which had a single on either side. So yeah. that's the small one where you yeah. had to put the adapter in the middle to play it on a, a turntable and right. an LP, which stood for long playing. So that was the bigger album that came in a beautiful, you know, this, square. This was a 45. You know. Okay. So it was a 45. That I was, still have right. it inside the magazine. So too, when you say that... promotional album, it's really a little promotional or little. Yeah. Or 45. I don't know. It could have been like when, when uh, that ill communication came out that they did uh, a, sp- a limited edition promo album just to promote one one of the singles on it it was a 40 I, I don't know okay. I don't know okay. look the the good news is that you've been you've been validated validated, validated. that's the key word here and you're not crazy well I won't go that far but you know in terms of this you're not crazy right. <laughs> Oh my lord! And I, I don't, I don't appreciate the man who was uh, oh. lambasting you and calling you a liar about the root beer. I, I thought it was funny, and I was like, I'll just sit back and let the other fans deal that's with the best. this. When you can have other people come to your defense and you can remain silent, that's even right. Better. I was like, it's so silly, and it's not like the 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 funniest part is Beastie Boy fans. We're not young people. <laughs> I'm not saying like our kids generation or like the generation below us doesn't appreciate the Beastie Boys. Right. But when but when I went to the they did like that um two of the two remaining Beastie Boys, uh Mikey Mickey D's Mickey what do you call him? Mickey so Mickey Mike D, D and my, <laughs> So Mike D and Ad Rock, they did this book tour and that I went to King's right. Theater in Brooklyn. We talked about that. Yeah, and and I've never seen so many grown men wearing Adidas jumpsuits in my life. It so was wait, pretty... the other one's named after a chair, Adirondack. Yes, that's right. What's Adirondack his... and Mickey D's. Adirondack. Ad Rock. Adam. Oh, Ad Rock. That's Adam. his nickname. Yeah, Ad Rock is his nickname. What's his full name? Adam Horowitz. His dad. <laughs> wait, where's that? <laughs> where, where's the rock come from? Is he rocks? Oh, that's cute. Ad, Ad Rock. rock. I don't know. And I mean, they were like in a punk. Beastie Boys was started off as a punk band. So are they all Jewish? All the Beastie Boys? I mean, I would put Jewish in quotes, you know, but yeah, they're all Jewish. I mean, so cute. MCA was more Buddhist. Yeah. Bo- Ju- Judist. How would you say Jewish Buddhist? Uh, um, a Jubu. A Jubu? That's what yeah. they call. Yeah. I mean, Jewish by birth. Right. So, but um, Ad Ad Rock's um, dad is Israel Horowitz, who is a playwright. Wow. Yeah. That, so that's that is fascinating. Yeah. They. I mean, they grew up in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Went like during this crazy cool era. Like they yeah. and they were like, it's really fascinating. But anyways, I won't go into it. Go watch. Speaking of Apple TV, the uh, what I saw on stage is a documentary, or they actually just recorded the stage show and it's on Apple TV. I was watching it at uh, your house when we were yeah, there. Right. I saw about two minutes of it before I realized what I was watching. I, was, I, I may or may away. not have been looking. <laughs> I may or may not have been looking for myself in the audience. I cannot confirm nor deny that. So I had a question for you. Uh, 
there's been this new craze. Maybe it's not so new. New, new to me, new to us. And Alan has gotten really into it. Me, uh, not oh, please, so much. Please don't tell me it's disc golf. <laughs> <laughs> I am relieved and exhilarated to report it is not disc golf. But you're close. It is a sport. It is pickleball. <laughs> Can we put that in quotes? <laughs> yeah. Have sport. you have you ever pl- up a sport? Right. Have you ever played pickleball? No, I mean, I've heard of it. It's like ping pong come to life, right? It, <laughs> sort of. It's sort of like ping pong meets wiffle ball, and it's yeah. trying to grow up and be a tennis game. Okay, <laughs> a game of tennis. <laughs> So it's it's these rackets that I don't even know how to describe them. They're they're sort of like uh, uh, like twice the size of a regular ping pong paddle, but they're plastic. Okay, like the paddle, like the paddles you would w- use on the beach when you're doing like that paddle ball on the beach. Oh oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. Sort yes, that's a great analogy. Sort of like Kadima, those Kadima rackets, and then <laughs> the ball is literally a wiffle ball. So it is. It's a big wiffle ball, like the size of a softball wiffle ball. Okay. And the court is is shortened. So you play on a tennis court, unless you have a designated pickleball court, which I, I don't think there's many of those. Most people just take a tennis court and they, they draw new lines, if that makes sense. So, um, and it's got funny rules, but it's actually, we played it last summer with the boys and it was good because, you know, Abe, who played tennis his whole you know, life until through high school and varsity tennis, even Alan can't play tennis with Abe because Abe hits the ball so hard. Right. But wiffle ball being hit hard, is he having a, a hard time like running after it or like he hits it so hard he's like, you cannot get hurt by a wiffle no, no, ball. I'm saying tennis. Abe hits the oh, tennis oh, ball oh, oh, so the hard. Ball. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Abe, right. Abe hits the tennis ball so hard that it's not fun for anybody to play with him in our family, just because we're not at that level. And it's not fun for Abe to play with us. So pickleball, <laughs> pickleball, on the other hand, has, has even the playing field on some, okay. on some level. And because you can really, I mean, as hard as you hit a wiffle ball, you can really just only hit a wiffle ball so hard. But anyway, so Alan has gotten really into this, and it's a doubles game. And every night after work, he goes and plays with one of our neighbors and and some uh, a few other couples. So he's like, "Come play," and I'm like, "Well, I don't think so. Like it's six o'clock, and I'd rather just grab like a whiskey <laughs> and hang out and be social." Because it's like 98 degrees here anyway. So if I'm going to sweat, my thought is I might as well just have a drink in my hand instead of a pickleball racket. I just should sweat out whiskey instead of. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it is, I mean, it, it actually is a really fun game. My friend A, you know, one of my best friends from high school, she was a competitive tennis player all her life. And she's gotten into wiffle ball. She is on the senior circuit. That's what happens when you turn 50. You get an ARP card and then no. you qualify for anything with the word senior at the front. No, I'm not allowing you to call you and your friend senior. Yeah. That's a that's obscene. Yeah. Yeah. No, my that's our an friend obscene word. We're our gonna, friend Jake who, who plays beep. with Alan. <laughs> <laughs> our friend Jake who plays with Alan, he's a month younger than I am and he's about to play in the senior pickleball tournament also. We were laughing about that. I'm really upset. Can we for, can we contact AARP? Can we and like get them to change? The oh, rules on seniors. The rules. No. Well, you get like a discount at the movies when you turn 50. Yeah. Who cares? I don't want to be called a senior in seven years. I that think sounds there are awful. lots of discounts. You know the story about mommy and daddy showing up at the movie theater and they didn't have their ARP cards to get their, you know, 50 cent discount at the time, whatever it was. And, you know, daddy's looking in his pocket. Mommy's looking through her purse. And finally, the probably 16 year old woman behind the booth goes, ma'am, sir. It's okay. Not many people fake an ARP card. (laughs) (laughs) It's not like they're getting fake ARP IDs these days. So um, it allows you to have a certain type of alcohol, right? (laughs) Exactly. So the other thing about pickleball is, you know, even though it, it sounds it sounds like it's not a sport. It is a sport and you get a great workout. And one of the other women that Alan plays with told me the other night that she has lost twenty five pounds playing pickleball. And Yeah, and I thought of you. I was like, what would Amanda say to that? And I said, that's amazing. I said, now, if I could lose 25 pounds eating pickles, that <laughs> that would be remarkable. There's got to be a diet that consists of only eating pickles or eating pickles to lose weight. I'm sure there's a celery one. <laughs> there's a cabbage one. Of course, yeah. there's a pickle diet. Yeah. yeah. Just 
gassy. That's that is that's just, just that's, losing air. That's not a good, <laughs> that's not a good uh, strategy just, for losing weight. Just deflating yourself or inflating yourself. Yeah. So, but now that Alan's so into pickleball, he wants me to be into pickleball. So every night he's like, "Come on, come play." I'm like, "No, I think I'll just drink." And <laughs> <laughs> and it's also, I will say even though it's fun and I've played before and I'm okay, I'm decent at it and I understand the rules. Now all these people have been playing almost every night of summer. So now I'm going to go in and frankly, I don't want to be the the biggest loser. I don't want to be the worst one on the court. But I also like, where am I going to go practice before I get out there to be like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And then, <laughs> Oh like, my gosh. You know, go out there. I think it's just too I, late. Okay. It's I'm too calling. Late. It's not. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's not too late, and I'm calling BS on this, and I think it's just pickleball, and you don't want to play pickleball, because you always talk about how it's never too late to do anything, right? There's always an opportunity to learn something new, no matter how old you are, and you're like one of the most competitive people I know, and and, and really good at picking things up. You're, you're good at ping pong. You can play tennis. I think you can pick up pickleball. I think... I think this is just a lame excuse. And I just want to say it could be worse. It could be shuffleboard. So there's <laughs> <laughs> well, as much as I appreciate that um, pep talk slash lecture, uh, I will say when I said it's too late, I meant it's too late in the day, you know, 6 p.m. That's 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 time for that's the time for hanging out, not working out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the time for, for yeah. whiskey, not yeah. whiffles. <laughs> I do my workout at 6 a.m. By the time it's 6 p.m., I'm that I really don't want to. But you're right. You're right. I should I should just do it. I, I shouldn't be paralyzed by the thought of being bad at it or embarrassing myself. Or but it's also because it's doubles. So there's a responsibility for you for the other person. Right. That's why I like doing stand up because I'm not. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's sure relying on you. Share <laughs> like you don't have to. I don't have to share a court with anyone, yeah. right? You have to, you're basically doing improv. It's or just the yes audience. Yes, right. yes, the person. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, your words, your words have laid heavy on me. I'll, I might, I might pickle it up. You never know. I would, I would try pickleball with you because for two reasons. Number one, <laughs> I, it, <laughs> it sounds delicious. Yes. I do. I like pickles and that seems like it would be something silly to play. And wiffle balls. I know we've discussed that I am like super afraid of balls, uh, but I, you know, I would categorize that to like hard balls. Yeah. Right, like um, <laughs> you are afraid of balls, softball, baseball. But you do love pickles. Yeah, this is a hard but, thing to reconcile. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> a little afraid of bowling balls, you know. But like a wiffle or a ping pong ball, those are. Yeah. Those the are... funniest thing is when you think about this, it's you're like, who came up with this game? It feels like one of those games that a bunch of kids, like when we used to play that game, kick the can or things like that, which is like, who came up with that game? That people just sat around and went, what if we took a Kadima racket? And we need a ball we can hit that won't hurt Johnny or Mia when we hit it really hard. Oh, how about this wiffle ball? Yeah, let's take the Kadeem oh. racket and the <laughs> wiffle ball and let's it, go play on the tennis court. The tennis court's too big. Okay, I've got duct tape. Let's tape off some lines. I think that uh, you need, first of all, it probably wasn't kids. It was retirees. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that makes sense because had arthritis. <laughs> we cannot carry the big, you know, this tennis ball. It's a little too small to grip and it hurts my knuckles. So all of your retirees are from New York or Boca. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes sense because I forgot to tell you there's a part at the front towards the net, like a it's probably four feet in length. And it's called the kitchen. And you're not allowed in the kitchen unless the ball bounces in there first. So I feel like there's an underlying thing. That's probably somebody has some repressed anxiety about somebody not letting them in the kitchen. And they threw that in the game, too. Because why would you call that the kitchen? I don't want to know, like, who created Except, here we go. What? It's where you get the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to go into the, the kitchen. I have to. I got to oh. get the pickle. Oh, my God. You won't believe how long it's been around. What? Pickleball, this is interesting, was created by Congressman Joel Pritchard, Barney McCollum, and Bill Bell. I guarantee you. How old are they? How, how old were they when they invented it? It, yes. it was, uh, well, chances are, if they're congressmen, that they are old. Uh, but they <laughs> well, invented over it. over a certain age. They invented it in 1965. Wow. Well, there yeah. you go. There you go. 
But that's crazy because it's, and we talked about this. It with, feels like it came out like a month ago. Seriously. Just kind of hit its stride, you know, that's all. That's it. It's new to me. It's like the shows on NBC, right? They're new right. to me. It's a tipping point. That's what pickleball has reached a tipping that is. point. Malcolm Gladwell would he could write a whole book on this now. Or maybe you reached your tipping point. <laughs> That's also that is also very point. very likely. The tipping point was age fifty. <laughs> All right, so you are experiencing pickleball in the afternoons. I am experiencing something entirely new, and that's the experience of experiences. I don't know if you're seeing I have no idea what that means. (laughs) I don't know if you're seeing this in Chattanooga, but, and it's really online, I have to say, that I've seen it, because I'm not actually, I'm not actually doing it, because I think they're kind of silly, but there are these uh, live events you can attend called, like, the Friends Experience, the Illuminarium, which is like a safari experience. Oh, I've seen that one on Facebook. Yeah, Candytopia, uh, Van Gogh experience. But it's essentially opportunities just to take selfies. That's all it is. It's like these immersive experiences, but people are doing it so they can get something for Instagram. It's it's not just, and especially Candytopia, because you're it's like being in Candyland. Wait, wait, so I'm confused. So is it a physical place or a virtual place? It is physical, although the safar- the Illuminarium is like this safari, and it is, I guess, kind of supposed to feel like you're doing VR, except it's like a giant room, and they're projecting onto walls. But it's not and a, it, you don't go through, it's not like a game you play online. You actually have to physically go to this place. Right. You're like in, a body exhibit. I mean, You're that, in that's, Central Perk. Right. Yes. You're, it's like a children's museum for adults. <sighs> Wait, what do you mean you're in Central Perk? Like the Friends experience, they've recreated the oh, set. Oh, friends, friends, the show, not just yes. hey, we're friends. Let's oh, go yeah. experience. You, are you lonely? Do you need? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna create an experience where we pretend to be your friends. Oh, I like, like that. It's like, like those mystery, uh, the the mystery theater experiences where you're dining and there's like a play going on that you can interact with, except. Oh no, I don't want to be part of any of that. You'd be good at that. You should be an actor in that. (laughs) Oh yes. That would be fun. That would be fun. All right. So back to the friends experience. So what is it? I'm not, I'm still confused. So they redid the set of friends, like a few different, like the, the main apartment, central perk, and you can go in and you can pay, I'm just guessing, $35. $35? I'm just guessing. Oh, I don't know. You're throwing... <laughs> you're just... Oh, I don't think, I bet it's around $35. If I ha... I, I, I'm not even going to Google yeah. it. It's not worth my time. But I'm just telling you, it's not $12. It's definitely more than a movie. But speaking of tipping point, what would be the tipping point for you? Like, what would you pay to go sit in a recreated set, like to go hang out in their apartment, sit in Central Perk, have a coffee with Gunther. You can't have a coffee with Gunther. He's not there. You can pretend. If I was a huge fan of Friends, I would. I mean, no, but I mean, if you wouldn't pay 35, let's assume that that's exorbitant. If it was 10 bucks, would you pay it? Uh, If the parking was okay. (laughs) (laughs) If there was free park. I'm very motivated. I have nothing else to do with my life. (laughs) So, okay, so all these experiences, they're traveling exhibits and they go to city to city? I'm assuming they're traveling. I don't think they're just coming to Atlanta. It's like Cirque du Soleil. They go travel. They set up their tents. Well, I'll tell you the experience that I keep experiencing, which is the COVID experience. And I am over it. I'd like it to stop traveling to my city. I'd like it to leave (laughs) the planet. (laughs) And I will pay any amount of money for that to happen. Girl, talk. (laughs) Girl talk. But I would like to go experience one of those candy things with you or the friends experience. And you know what? As uh, as they said on Ted Lasso, instead of taking selfies, we can take an ussy because it's of us. That would be my tipping point is if you did it with me and we would use it. For... <laughs> and by the way, I think we've probably abused and misused the word tipping point about 14 times in this yeah, podcast. Right. Sorry, Drink folks. It. Oh, well, <laughs> it's our podcast. We can say what we want to say. Get your old fashioned and take a sip every time you hear us say tipping point. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks for listening to Ussie on the latest edition of Sis and Tell podcast. 
If you appreciated what we had to say or you didn't, still share us with your friends because people love to, like, complain about things. (laughs) As always, this has been Amanda and Allison with a whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. We'll catch you next time.